back. Former Michigan Congressman and former Intelligence Committee Chair Peter Hoekstra joins us this morning to discuss the recent WikiLeaks release of CIA hacking documents. Thanks so much for being with us. Good to be with you. Thank you. And as you well know, WikiLeaks this week released what it says are roughly 8,000 web pages and other documents revealing uh, the CIA's hacking methods. On the face of it, how damaging is this breach? I think it's uh, very, very damaging. This is a situation where we now have an intelligence community uh, that really is in crisis. Obviously, it has an, its own internal problems uh, where you see this kind of massive uh, release or this massive breach of its systems. The other thing that you have is you have an intelligence community now that has a crisis of confidence with the American people. Uh, the American people are wondering, how does this happen? This is now the third time. We had the, the breach from Bradley Manning. We had the breach from Edward Snowden. And now we've got this breach of the CIA. So you've got an intelligence community that uh, is kind of in free fall with the American people wondering, what's going on? How come our spies can't keep secrets? We have a, you know, we have a spy community that cannot keep secrets. That's not good. So what more should be done, do you think, to safeguard uh, the CIA secrets? Well, there's a couple of things that need to happen. Number one, there's a question as to why the CIA even had this type of cyber capability. Uh, it used to be that all of this cyber kind of capability, that was the responsibility of the NSA. I guess there's now four different intelligence communities that uh, or four different parts of the intelligence community that are kind of duplicating their own capabilities. So you've got four areas that you have to protect. And the question is, why are we creating these little fiefdoms all over the intelligence community? Uh, why don't we have it in one central place so that we've only got one real area that we've got to protect uh, where we do this kind of work? Uh, there's also been reports that the systems within, within the CIA old computers, old computer systems, old security mechanisms. Clearly, if you want to be the premier cyber warrior in the world today, you need to make the proper investments. So I think Congress is going to have to take a look at this and determine whether the proper investments have been made uh, to make sure that our systems are up to date. And the third thing you need to do is obviously you got to go back and take a look at uh, the procedures uh, that you have in place. Is the culture right? Are the procedures right? Uh, do we have the best tools in place to protect our data? You know, why can't or why hasn't the government so far been able to shut down WikiLeaks? Well, I mean, uh, WikiLeaks uh, clearly is uh, very good at, at what they do. Uh, the second question is, has that been a pr priority or has, uh, you know, has an administration, has an executive branch uh, agency been given the authority or the directive to shut down WikiLeaks? And the third question is, if you shut down WikiLeaks, uh, they still have the data. Uh, do they take that data and just transfer it to someone else? So the real question is, what's the value of shutting down WikiLeaks, at least their access to the public, if by shutting them down, they just take this information uh, and move it someplace else, and it still gets to the American people? Former Congressman Pete Hoekstra is our guest this morning. We're talking about this week's release by WikiLeaks of what it says are the CIA's hacking methods. And we're, as always, taking your calls. The line for Democrats is 202-748-8000. The line for Republicans is 202-748-8001. And the line for Independents is 202-748-8002. Now, earlier this week, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange held a press conference uh, Thursday, and he discussed what WikiLeaks plans to do with the additional information it has on the CIA's hacking tools. Take a listen. It has a lot more uh, information uh, on uh, what has been going on with the cyber weapons program. Uh, and so I want to announce uh, today that after uh, considering um, uh, what we think is the best way to proceed and uh, hearing these calls from um, some of the manufacturers. Uh, we have decided to uh, work with them uh, to give them some exclusive access uh, to the additional technical details we have uh, so that fixes 
uh, can be developed uh, and pushed out so people can be secured. And then once this material is effectively uh, disarmed uh, by us, by removing critical components, uh, we will publish uh, additional details uh, about uh, what has been occurring. Now, if Assange is to be believed, how do you think tech companies should respond to his offer? Well, I think uh, tech, tech companies uh, should reject his offer. Uh, Julian Assange is, uh, is a terrible individual. Uh, the stuff that he is releasing now makes America less safe. Uh, he's revealing what we call sources and methods in the intelligence community. He's telling our enemies what our capabilities are, and he may also be releasing to them exactly how we accomplish what we do, how we go out and steal data. That is what spy organizations are expected to do, whether they work for the U.S. government, whether they work for the Russian government, the Chinese government, or someone else. Uh, they go out and they try to find the plans and intentions uh, of what their enemies are. And there are no indications that the CIA or other parts of our intelligence community uh, have done anything wrong or that they've used these tools against Americans. But Julian Assange is making America less safe each and every day. Uh, the tech companies, I don't believe, will work with him, uh, and I hope they don't. Let's take a few calls. We have Sean calling in from Key West, Florida, on the independent line. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Yes, uh, as a former investigative broadcast journalist, I would like to posit that we're approaching this from the wrong direction. We should be looking not to uh, shoot the messenger, but to find out if the, the message is correct, that these people might have been using these devices to actually penetrate the American population. You take a look at uh, Bradley Manning. The things that he pointed out were terrible. They, they go against everything the American people stand for, actually murdering people. And, and he pointed those things out, and he goes to jail for that. You have Mr. Snowden, who points out that the NSA is, is heavily involved in monitoring the, the people and the freedoms of the United States. And now we have WikiLeaks, and we want to shoot the messenger again. We need to find out if these people are actually doing these types of things. I would, I would point out to you, gentlemen, as, as having been a, a student uh, traveling in Europe uh, after the Second World War, that those people in Germany, I asked them about the Jewish question, and they said there was nothing they could do about it. It's the same thing that we as Americans are doing now. We're involved in wars that are killing millions of people, and if you stop anyone on the street, they will tell you, I'm sorry, there's absolutely nothing we can do about it. Again, I pause it. We're looking at this question from the wrong direction, and I'll take my response off, off the air. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for the comment, Sean. The interesting thing here is that Bradley Manning, Edward Snowden, and we don't know who did this last leak of the CIA data, Bradley Manning and Edward Snowden, if they believe that American, if the American intelligence community was violating American law, they could have gone to the intelligence committee in the Senate or in the House of Representatives and brought those issues forward. They decided not to. Uh, that is, uh, that is, those are treasonous activities. They had other channels where they could have brought their complaints or their, their concerns uh, to be investigated and be investigated in a proper manner, and they decided not to do that. I share some of your concerns. Uh, an intelligence community that does not keep its secrets, can't keep its secrets, uh, indicates something, an, an organization that does not have proper controls in place. Where I get concerned is, does that mean that when James Clapper comes out, the former director of national intelligence, and says to the American people, I know that these tools that we have in the intelligence community to spy on foreigners, which is our job, I can with, high, uh, with a high degree of certainty tell you that those tools are not used against Americans. I'm sorry, at this point in time, the leadership of the intelligence community cannot, with any type of credibility, make those claims. We know it's against the law to spy on Americans. We know that, I know and I've met these people, that it's very much against the culture of the people in the intelligence community to use these tools against the American people. But the 
community has demonstrated a lack of internal controls, that we don't have the certainty that there may not be some rogue elements that are using these tools against Americans. And Congressman, this, this data breach is one thing, but I have to ask you, why do you think the intelligence community, the, the NSA, the CIA, the FBI, uh, has a persistent problem, it appears at least, uh, with leaks to the media? Why they have the problems with the leaks to the media? Yeah. Um, you know, you really don't know what the motivations are. Obviously, uh, there was some very sensitive information, some of the most sensitive information that the intelligence community collects, and this is uh, the intercepts of phone calls of Americans overseas. It's called inadvertent collection. This stuff is supposed to be locked up and put away, but someone transcribed it. They distributed it widely through the community, uh, and then someone leaked it to the press. And you don't quite know what their motivations are. Do they have a political angle against the new Trump administration? Uh, do they have uh, an agenda against their own uh, agency that they may work for? It's hard to determine what the motivation is uh, because the acts are illegal and in certain cases uh, they make America much less safe uh, and they make us very, very vulnerable. So yeah, why they behave in that way uh, it's hard to determine, and until you actually catch these folks uh, and take a look at it, we probably will not know what their motivation is. Let's go back to the phones. We have Edward calling in from Liverpool, Texas, on the Democratic line. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I've been listening to the, the WikiLeaks scandal for, seems like, forever now. They, uh, they're getting their information either from uh, the Russians or other people that are considered our enemies. And then they hand them over to WikiLeaks, and then WikiLeaks kind of plays games on how they let certain amounts out at a time. It's kind of strange that we would actually believe any of this stuff that could be easily manipulated, change words in a sentence, add this and subtract that. You don't know how much of it's for real. Just, of course, it makes everybody want to listen and say, see what kind of dirt they dug up. But if you ever really wanted to fix Washington, they might try something really brand new, try the atheists and the LGBTQT community, and I'll bet they would sit down and get things done and they wouldn't be fighting over morals, morality of Christianity or morality of the Constitution. They would just do the morality of human beings and get this country up and going again. Yeah. The, uh, the interesting thing now is we know that Edward Snowden is li listening or, yeah, he's listening to this or uh, he's living in Russia today. There's no indication that when he decided to provide the information to Le WikiLeaks that he was actually working with or for the Russians. Uh, the same with Bradley Manning. Uh, and, of course, at this point in time, we don't know uh, how the breach occurred within the CIA. Let's go now to Lester calling in from Newark, New Jersey on the Republican line. Thanks for your patience. Good morning. Uh, yes, uh, my, um, um, I'm going to speak about um, why Edward Snowden did what he did and why he did it. If they really kept their eye on him, this wouldn't have not happened, you know. And, um, and, and we're, we're in a mess that we're in now because of what he did. And that's wrong, you know. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking tired of it, you know. But, uh, you know he's um you know you know uh, we got we got to keep an eye on these guys. We got to keep an eye on them so they won't be doing this again. You know we got to make sure that they don't that they don't that they don't that they don't uh, do the same thing again. You know because this is um this is this is this is, this is bad for our country. You know this is really bad for our country. Yeah, I think uh, Lester makes the point uh, that we made earlier is that. The CIA, NSA, and the military intelligence community, they have not had the proper protocols in place so that, you know, as we start seeing patterns of behavior where a Snowden or a Manning are downloading, you know, significant portions of data and they're provided with access to places uh, that you would think that people in their position shouldn't have access to that data. Uh, and so, yeah, not only are we not watching these folks, but we're putting them in, a, in positions of of access and we're allowing them to do things that I'm hoping is not happening in, in companies in the private sector. It appears that the protocols that we have in place in certain parts of the in intelligence community have not been appropriate, they've not been effective, and perhaps one of the more disturbing things is 
you know, you see Bradley Manning and you say, oh man, we've got to go in and we've got to check our protocols. Do we have the right procedures in place to protect large batches of data? You we know, see Bradley Manning. We don't learn from it. We see Edward Snowden. It doesn't appear that we've learned from that and now we've got uh, the CIA breach, hopefully we will learn from these mistakes uh, and put in place the better procedures to pre protect this kind of data because it's absolutely essential if we want to keep America safe. I have a question about the, the politics of this. Given the fact that then candidate Trump said on the campaign trail, I love WikiLeaks after the group released uh, damaging emails from John Podesta who was the former campaign chairman for Hillary Clinton, do you think that in any way limits the White House response to this issue? Uh, I hope not. I mean, I think that uh, I think the Trump administration and people in the intelligence community uh, are in agreement. This is devastating to the United States of America, uh, and the uh, you know we have to stop it. If if we're going to be in the spying business, which I think we have to be in, uh, if we are going to keep America safe, then we need to be very very good. And part of being a great spy is to be able to keep secrets. Spies who can't s keep secrets are a real problem. So if we're going to be there, we, gotta ha we have to have the leadership uh, from the top, which includes the president, which includes Mike Pompeo, which includes Dan Coats, uh, who's going to be the new director of national intelligence. And I think that's exactly where they are. They recognize the devastating impact that these leaks have. Uh, and it also is a devastating because the vast majority of the people in the intelligence community they are committed to this country they are com they are some of them are risking their lives each and every day this really hurts morale within the community because they see it as a failure of their agency of the intelligence community they don't like seeing it happen they're gonna work with Mike Pompeo they're gonna work with Dan Coates uh, to rebuild the trust that they have in their own organization, the pride that they have in their organization, and they're going to work to restore the link between them and the American people because they need the American people to know that they are working on their behalf and that an intelligence community is not a threat uh, to the American people. It's only a threat to those who mean us harm. We've got Mary calling in from North Las Vegas, Nevada, on the Democratic line. What's on your mind? Yes, I was just calling this to, to say one thing, because I noticed when you start out with lies, it's going to be lies. FBI, CIA, and uh, when Trump got in there, he was lying. So, you know, the Bible said every time you take a lie and wrap it around the truth, the truth always come out. And it's been lying ever since, and it's only, and the preachers, if they stay in church and try to get some of these criminals off the street and mind their own business, then this would be a better world. And if the people would stop lying all the time on each other, and then when they get caught in a lie, I'd go for the FBI, CIA, or any of them. But when Trump got in there and started lying, everybody was lying. And then that's what's wrong with uh America now. Nobody's telling the truth, and, and I'm scared, and everybody is scared. They don't know what to do, and I think it's trouble. It's going to take God to get us out of this mess. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, go well, to the, uh, you know, the caller saying it, 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 there's a real mess out there. There is, um, you know, and this is one of the key things that has to happen, and as we were just talking about, the intelligence community and its leadership has to reestablish its credibility with the American people. We had, you know, the director of national intelligence a few years ago come on uh, and testify. It was probably covered by C-SPAN, uh, the hearing uh, where he was asked, is America, or is the intelligence community keeping a massive database that may include uh, information on, on, on Americans? And uh, he said no. Uh, and in reality, a couple of uh, weeks later or a month later, we found out that that was, a, that was an inaccurate statement. He was, he was misleading uh, the senator and the Senate Intelligence Committee and the American people by his answer. Those types of mistakes uh, are devastating to the credibility. An intelligence community has to have the support of the American people if it's going to be successful. We have a tweet here from someone using the handle uh, StormChase3. He asks, 
Uh, why do we have 17 different intelligence agencies? Can you explain each role, cost, number of employees? Uh, generally speaking, why are there so many uh, different intelligence agencies? Well, because they each have their own uh, different roles, and, the, uh, and it's really important that they stay in their lane. We have the people who, uh, who fly satellites. Uh, who take uh, images from space, uh, NGA, uh, we, uh, and that's their specialty. They're very, very good at it. We have the CIA, which really uh, focuses on human intelligence uh, and those types of things. They're good at what they do. Uh, we have the NSA, which goes after uh, electronic uh, intercepts, electronic, electronic digital type of information. Uh, we have the intelligence uh, branches in each of the military services, uh, which is there to provide accurate information intelligence in a more real-time basis to our men and women uh, on the battlefield. And so, uh, you know, that, that gives you uh, a general feeling for that they each do have specific roles uh, with specific customers or consumers of the information that they provide. Some of them are very much focused on real-time, real, uh, real-time information to protect our, our people on the battlefield. There are others that are trying to collect more long-term information as to what the plans and intentions, uh, what the capabilities of our enemies are so that we can planned strategically over the next three, five, or seven years uh, to deal with the kinds of threats that we have. So, uh, you know, you put all of that together and, you know, back in 2004 on a bipartisan basis, uh, we passed an intelligence reform bill that put in place a director of national intelligence that would take these 17 different agencies and make sure that there was some coordination and cooperation between them so that we, get, we would get the maximum bang for our buck uh, and to make sure and to try to minimize overlap or uh, conflicting roles and missions for each of those agencies. So that's why the DNI was established. The question is right. Why 17? I think you can justify them, but let's make sure that they're working together effectively. We've got Douglas on the line calling in from West Hamlin, West Virginia, on the independent line. Good morning. Good morning. God bless America. I'd just like to uh, question what CIA's purpose is, what their overall goal is, other than just uh, perpetual war. <clears throat> well, the real goal of the CIA is to gather the information that gives us the plans and intentions of what our enemies uh, are, are intending to do versus the United States. They gather intelligence uh, f that we can use on the battlefield, uh, whether it's in Syria, whether it's in Iraq, whether it's in other places around the world. Uh, you know, they're trying to get into ISIS and Al-Qaeda to figure out what their plans and intentions are vis-a-vis -vis attacking U.S. facilities, uh, in, around the world or specifically in the United States. So that is one thing. Actionable information that keeps us safe in real time. Uh, the second thing that they do is they go out and they try to get the information that tells us what our primary enemies are capable of and what their plans and intentions are. Really, what are the capabilities of Iran and their nuclear program? What about North Korea? Do we have any insights into the North Korean leadership as to uh, whether they would actually even contemplate uh, using some of the capabilities that they are now developing? That goes into our policymakers who are then responsible for developing America's policies in terms of keeping us safe. The intelligence community is designed to provide us with information so that our policymakers can make more informed decisions as to what America needs to do. Uh, Catherine calling in from Mobile, Alabama, a Democrat. Good morning, Catherine. Good morning. First of all, sir, I have a couple of points, but my first one is this. I took physics in school. Now, I'm an old lady, so I've been around a long time. I was raised in the 50s and the 60s. So let's talk about why we're getting hacked. The reason we're getting hacked, sir, is you cannot go outside and capture a sun ray and put it in a jar. Any information that goes over the air is vulnerable. 
You will have a patch for it, sir, and then there will be 10 more people trying to undo it. The technology of this country should be used in addition to our other security. We need to have a closed-loop system for the Pentagon and all important things, sir. Anytime you put it on air, there is no way to hold it. Please understand this. That is very, very important. I do not understand where the brains and the logic in this country has gone, except for to the money train, because technology makes a lot of people a lot of money. And instead, we've got these people testing us right now with this WikiLeaks mess. They're testing us. What if they shut down our systems, sir, all of our systems, our power grid, our water grid? Do you not think that they're going to do this? I know with logic. I am a student of logic. I took it in college. I don't understand how our country has gotten so out of control, except for we've had men running it. Sorry, guys, but y'all have done a terrible situation, made a terrible situation worse. We women need to take over. We need to get this country under control, have pragmatic leadership that does not lie. Donald Trump is a liar. He is the most dangerous thing to our national security. I am sorry, but he is. He is a liar, he, and so is Mike Pence. We saw it on TV yesterday. Mike Pence came out and said he did not know of this information. When Elijah Cummings had written that man a letter and sent it to him back in November, this has got to stop. I'm with the lady that called in from Nevada or wherever she was. The lion, the lion, the lion. That is the threat to our country, sir. The, uh, a couple of points here. The, uh, the first is, according to WikiLeaks, the CIA system was a closed loop. Uh, so they actually got into about the most sensitive and secure place uh, within the CIA. I'm not in government. I'm not on the Intelligence Committee uh, anymore. I don't know whether that is accurate or not. The, uh, the second point that you make is, I think, X is an excellent point, which is talking about, you know, the breaches that we've had today with Manning, Snowden, and now the CIA, CIA have been about losing data. That, that really hurts, and it hurts the capabilities of our intelligence community. It also points out that in, on the cyber battlefield, America doesn't appear to dominate the same way that it, it dominated uh, the traditional battlefield of smart bombs, uh, you know, and, and those types of things, stealth bombers and those. On the traditional battlefield, America is the best in the world and no one disputes it. Russia and China, you know, they're challengers, but we're better than they are. On the cyber battlefield, we not only have to deal with Russia and China, but people like Iran, which is an a threat to us. They're very good on the cyber battlefield. Israel, which is an ally, they're very good on the cyber battlefield. Uh, then you have to worry about people like North Korea and non-state actors like ISIS. Uh, they're not as good overall in cyber, but they may have very specific areas where they are good. And the point that you make is something that I worry about very much. Cyber is the wild, wild west. There's no rules in cyber about what people may do to each other. And yes, they can come in and potentially take down part of our grid, attack a nuclear plant, um, take part, down part of our financial system. We, I believe we're very vulnerable. Uh, and one of these days, someone is going to attack uh, part of that system. And we may not know who it is. Uh, cyber, the cyber battlefield is the great equalizer we are not the premier, the best uh, cyber folks in the world. We are good, but there's others that are probably our equal, so we should be very, very worried about that. Uh, in terms of uh, the political comments that you've made about uh, Mike Pence, uh, Donald Trump, I'm sorry. Uh, the, these are honorable people. Uh, these are people who we elected to be our president. 
Uh, and I hope that, uh, yeah, personally, I hope that Democrats start recognizing that we have elected a president uh, and that uh, we start working in a process rather than being the resistance uh, and that we actually recognize we need to work together and get some things done. And I think Mike Pence uh, and especially Donald Trump uh, are about getting things done, about immigration, national security, uh, and those types of things. And I hope that Democrats start working with Republicans and rather just being uh, a resistance movement and finally about uh, putting women in charge uh, of everything in America will be great uh, you know I'll pass on making any comments on that okay our final call for this half hour comes from Mindy in st. Paul Minnesota she's a Republican good morning good morning I agree with the lady as far as and as far as um, mr. Hoekstra does this has become a real dangerous situation we're in now with the data loss and I've been following this pretty closely, and most of it is the CIA. And when they had this breach of the data this time, there was a contract with Apple, Samsung, Google, and there were other, other affiliations that the CIA was supposed to inform them so they could knock down some of the issues that were going to occur. They did not. The CIA did not. They also said that now that all this data was taken, Anybody could put rumors, plant stuff, and there would be no fingerprints on the data. So that if they want to go in and put something on Russia and Trump now, they can, and nobody would know it. And then as well as um, Obama, before he left office, he signed in 16 more departments that could have um, access to all the secret and confidential data. Well, we knew, and he knew, that this would create more leaks. Oh, really? That's why all of a sudden the leaks are that they're wiretapping? I feel that was to cover that up. Yeah, the, uh, there, there's an interesting thing that's been happening uh, with the intelligence and the data that we gather that I think is making us more vulnerable in terms of having uh, additional leaks occur. Re you'll remember right after 9-11 there was a talk about the wall between foreign intelligence and domestic law enforcement and because they weren't communicating effectively it was one of the reasons perhaps that we didn't prevent 9-11 so uh, after 9-11 we, we put walls into that door to allow the intelligence community to provide data to domestic law enforcement if, re if it related to terrorism uh, or compelling national security interests. So there were doors that were put in. Just before President Obama left office, he basically knocked down the wall uh, and allows now for widespread dissemination of foreign intelligence that's gathered under very strict requirements uh, to now be shared broadly across uh, that, that boundary, that border between uh, foreign intelligence and domestic law enforcement and to be used for lots of other things, uh, I think that's a decision that this administration has to go back and take, take a look at. I think it makes us vulnerable uh, and I think it also makes the intelligence community and the tools that they have, uh, it increases the likelihood that the powerful tools that they have may someday be used through foreign intelligence organizations and they may be used against Americans and I think that's something that we just cannot allow to happen. It's why that wall was there in the first place. It needs doors but there needs to be uh, a better border than what we currently have. Former Congressman Pete Hoekstra, thanks so much for your uh, insight this morning, sir. Hey, great, thank you. Good to be with you and enjoyed the callers. Coming up, Joshua New with the Center for Data Innovation will be here to talk about why certain government data is disappearing from the public's view. And then later on, Nation Magazine contributor Michael Mishak joins us to talk about his recent magazine piece titled Big Oil's Grip on California. You won't want to